Okay, CIT 226, Data Integrity and Security. We are covering chapter number three, which is about uh, database security. The book title is Database Security, but we are covering database installation for MySQL. And you know that MySQL is an open source uh, database management system. Now, the objectives are identify the considerations that an administrator must take into account prior to installation the basic knowledge that you must have before choosing that which database you want to use for uh, the installation of a database. Download and install the binary distribution of MySQL for most common operating systems and configure a MySQL database for both Windows and Unix based platforms. Uh, in this course we'll be covering only Windows based installation, no Linux installation. Secure the installation and configuration of MySQL server now, there are lots of reasons why we choose uh, an open source database management system. Uh, whenever you are setting up a website where you want to have a database online, uh, everyone chooses MySQL most, in most of the cases. The biggest reason is that it's free and there is a lot of support for it available on the internet plus for online transaction processing, it's considered one of the best to have with your application. Reliable open source application, most popular open source database application used today, can be customized to fit almost any business or personal environment. So they have an enterprise version of it available on their website. Uh, of course, it's not free, but they are providing lots of support for that and uh, there are organizations which are using it. Pre-installation considerations for the administrator, distribution formats, MySQL version, supporting platforms, and the technical support lines means that the application that is developed, whether it is compatible with the uh, database itself or not. Now, MySQL can be installed on in different ways, simple package execution, custom downloads. Uh, you can install it either as the binary format, in a zip format, and can manually install it. It's a bit tricky, but it's a lighter footprint as compared to installing a full version of it. Two main installation formats are there, allows the user to download actual MySQL source code to change, customize, and compile as desired. As it's open source, so its source files are available. You can download it as a zip format, make the modifications on it uh, if you want, and then install it on the server. Uh, binary code installation, binary files ready for installation without compiling. Now, software programming expertise is necessary for customization. Of course, you must have basic information about the customization of the application itself. Removing unneeded default features or a specific version of a MySQL can improve the efficiency of it. Uh, detailed documentation must be created for any customization so that if there is a problem, you can revert it back. Now, it's easy to install, requires less time and expertise, cannot be customized, and compilers cannot be changed. Now, consider the alternatives before deciding to use uh, the source code distribution installation. There are several different versions of MySQL which exist today. It depends some uh, applications are there, for example, Drupal or Moodle. Maybe there would be a latest release of MySQL database available on their website, but the software requirement would be lower than the latest version which is there on the website. So they have an archive on their website where you can check the older versions of it and you can download it from there. Third-party vendors distribute their own versions with customized features for specific environments and operating systems. Um, I would say never trust on these things unless and until it's coming in bundled with the application. For example, Drupal WordPress, if they are providing a customized solution on their official websites, then it's a uh, safe deal. Otherwise, if you're downloading it from a third website that it is customized for these things, it's an open source, it, it can even um, harm your application or business itself. So never rely on these things, especially if it's related to the database. Identifying the most stable MySQL release available, important to success of the database application implementation. 
main fa uh, phases uh, of MySQL release were general availability, release candidate, beta version, and alpha. Now that was long time ago. Nowadays they have only one version which is stable, available on their website. You can download it and install it. Before it used to appear as alpha and beta release of it. Now the compatibility of the operating system depends like it's working on Oracle Linux 5 and above, Red Hat 5 and above, Send OS 5 Plus, Oracle Solaris, Ubuntu, SUSE Linux, Debian, uh, Windows Server operating systems, Windows 7 onwards, Mac operating systems, almost all operating systems. We'll be installing Server 2022 in our lab as a virtual machine on which we'll try to install MySQL later, but that does not mean that you cannot install it on Windows 7, 8, 10, or 11. It is uh, possible to install it. If you want to check installation of window of MySQL, you can install it on your Windows just for testing purposes. If you want to use your Windows 10 machine as an IIS, you can convert it into a web server just by going to add remove programs and features and add the component of IIS and then you can install MySQL and can run your applications directly from Windows 10 machine as well. But uh, since you guys are graduating, you must have knowledge about the server operating systems as well. We'll try to install it on server and we'll see how it performs over there. Now, in order to let me go. Now, if you want to download MySQL, you can go to MySQL website and uh, you can see that they have all the information available and they are also showing the customers which are using MySQL database. Now, my, does, uh, MySQL database service with Heatwave for free, $30, $300 credit for 30 days if you want to try it. Otherwise, you can simply go to downloads and there is a version of it available which is MySQL Community GPL Downloads. So you will click on it. If you see in, on top of it MySQL database service, they are promoting uh, the Heatwave which is the professional version or the enterprise version of it 5400 times faster than Amazon. 1400 times faster than Amazon Aurora. Then 6.5 X faster than Amazon Redshift and seven times faster than Snowflake. So that's the overall breakdown of it. Just to convince you, then two third of the cost of Amazon and then half of the cost of rest of the Amazon services, etc. Now we'll click on MySQL Community GPL Downloads once you'll click on it, you'll have these options of downloading individual things or all in one. Now you must have an account on Oracle, it's free. You can create it in order to download the file. So create an account before you'll download. The things that we would need for the installation of MySQL is, uh, I'll go for MySQL installer for Windows. And if you want to manage the MySQL server, you will be downloading MySQL Workbench. Now Workbench is the graphical user interface of MySQL database through which you can see lots of things, manage data and stuff like that. But if we are downloading a full version of MySQL installer for Windows, it would come in with the uh, Workbench so that you can install a complete version of it on your machine and you can manage it. So you'll click on MySQL installer for Windows. It would take you to this page where one is web installer 2.3 and the other one is offline download which is of 435 MB means it's a complete package where you have everything included in it. Now if you want to choose a different operating system you can click on it and choose for that. And if you want to see the previous table releases of MySQL, you'll go to archives and in archives, they have listed all previous versions of it. You'll have to select like for Microsoft Windows and these are the previous releases of it. So if your application or a content management system, whatever you're installing 
requires an older version of uh, MySQL. You can install it. See, it's going all the way to version 1.1, 5.5 and all those. So you can choose it from here. We downloaded this 470 MB version of it for the testing purposes in our student labs. Now that's what they're saying, official download site, go to dev.mysql, downloads and contains all available versions of it, community edition and enterprise edition of it. Now the next steps would show you the basic installation of MySQL in Windows, in boundary distribution, the latest community edition release of MySQL is 8.0.28. Now MySQL is available virtually for Windows operating system for both 32-bit and 64-bit. Now mind it if you are installing a 64-bit of MySQL server and you are separately installing a workbench to manage a MySQL server, that does not require that my uh, workbench should be 64-bit or 32-bit. Both works with MySQL server itself. Installing MySQL on Windows using installer package, three different binary packages are available essential package, complete package, and no install archive. Now, as you can see, uh, we have downloaded or we have marked the version, which is of 435 MB uh, MSI file, which is Windows installer, and you can directly install it on any Windows operating system. Now, there are different options or variants of it which are available. Uh, you'll have to choose over here that which version you want to install. Whenever you'll click on the version, for example, developer or server only or client only, full or custom, you'll see some details in this on right hand side. So you can read the details and choose it. For developer defaults, it's install all products needed for MySQL development purposes. And if you're just checking it on your computer, you need it for basic purposes, you'll go for this one. If it's a dedicated server for MySQL, you'll use the second option. If you are a client only and you are connecting to a dedicated server, you'll go for uh, the client only and full would install everything, whatever is there in it. I selected custom and then you can choose add and remove features by clicking on these buttons here. So you'll simply click on any item which is not required. You can remove it from here or add it from the left bar. Uh, these things can be added. Then you'll press next and it would show you a message that it's ready for install. Once, it, once you're satisfied that you need all of these things, you can simply press execute and it would start installing the applications which you need. Now, once it's installed, you'll have an option to configure it and you'll configure it for development computer and other things. As you can see, I have marked it in red. If you'll click on this thing, you'll be able to see rest of the options that you are installing it, which kind of system. And then it's selecting the ports and everything. I would recommend to keep it as it is so that you don't have any issues later. Now, MySQL must be configured after installation and uh, in Windows configuration aspects, identify the server type and role, allocate the resources for storage engine and uh, identify the root password, which uh, gives you the ownership to the property. So there will be a default username and password, like the, the, the password that you'll set it up. It's always recommended to create some username and password so that in case if you'll forget the main one, you'll be able to use the uh, DB admin password in order to make the changes. I'll show you in the next slides. MySQL server instance configuration creates a custom uh, configuration file which is called my.ini so you can search for this file and you'd find all custom configurations that you have on this one it would prompt you to begin the initialization of the server configure the type for example detailed or a standard installation and then it would show you that how the confirmation windows would end my SQL in, uh, installation complete finish and then start configuring it as it's shown over here that once it would fin it would be finished it would ask you to add it as a service to windows services directory 
and the name of the service would be MySQL 80 and it would start the service. Now you'll press next and it would create a username and password or a root access confirmation screen to save the password just like this one. It's saying MySQL root password on top where you'll define and I have created a DB admin account here so that if I'll forget it at least I have a username and password in order to reset the application. So that's what they were trying to tell you. Then you'll simply save the password, server will prompt you to complete the wizard and it would ask for MySQL admin program changes to the root password configuration script would be in five different user accounts, anonymous, etc. Now passwords, if left blank by default, root passwords allow execution of every command available in MySQL. So make sure your root password is very well protected. Same goes if we'll be installing PHP MyAdmin on our server 2022. It must be clear that how it goes and should be uh, configured. Never store password in a plain text format. Default root username can be easy to be found online and change the username and password to provide additional security. You'll see that whenever you are saving the passwords, even in MySQL database itself, it never saves it in a clear text format. It always converts it into hashes and stuff so that if someone even logs into the database, even with a root admin access, they won't be able to see the password as a clear text. The only option you have is just to reset the password to something else so that the user can log in with that password. As soon as the password is set, again it's converted into hash, but the end user will be entering the password as they usually enter. Now follow the principle of least privileges to ensure the protection of sensitive data. Do not share your root access and remove or disable any anonymous accounts which comes in by default installed on MySQL. Database administrators often overlook network connections when creating a security plan. Best practices of protecting a network connection is to disable the remote access. Do not leave any ports open. Use IP addresses to restrict the access and encrypt your connection using an SSH or SSL. So don't connect to it using a telnet. As we discussed earlier that on telnet the communication is not secure and your password flows on the network in a clear text format. Now it should have a dedicated access if it is a dedicated MySQL database or even if it's running on a web server. There will be specific IP address of it and the ports through which you will be accessing it. Unnecessary access to the server where you have your database can compromise the data. Now that's it as far as this chapter is concerned and uh, I'll post uh, uh, the installation and complete tutorial of installation of MySQL server on uh, the channel as a separate video. So if you want to follow, you can follow that for the installation. That's it for today.